So, for whom did I write this presentation? Of course, for front end developers, but we also of WordPress and for plugin authors. And of course, for everybody who's interested in. But I said that uh, and at the start because this will be a very technical presentation. It's not about languages or so. With, with, yeah, some need to code is, um, is, um, is uh, crucial. Okay, what do I cover in the presentation? Of course, I will talk about because no, uh, yet of course I will talk about the conformance level A and double A because it's, you have to fulfill them. I talk about technique category categorized sorry categorized as sufficient and of course of HTML and of the relevant WordPress functions. I will not talk about um sorry I have to rearrange my screen my second screen is I will not talk about um, other topics because I have not that time to get a condensed and basic uh, presentation about that topic. I will not cover ARIA, not CSS, or JavaScript, no frames, no, no, it's, I have not that time. But for all the other um, topics, you are right here. Okay, let's say some work about me again. Um, about my um, profession. Yes, I am a computer scientist for digital media for about 20 years, but I am also um, an expert for accessibility because I have impairment. I'm hard of hearing, I'm body impaired, I'm a wheelchair user. And of course, accessibility in every um, topic of the life of my life was in my interest and or is in my interest. And so I got in touch with web accessibility in 1998 when I did my first steps in HTML programming. And so, oh, there are such a great potential to create accessible content for everybody, but we have to know how to do it. And you also can do it very wrong. So I got in touch with the first um, WCAG or in short, we said um, 1.0 in 1999, I think. And I was a contributor for the next version of them. And I am today, I am a consultant and developer for WordPress accessibility. Well, what will you get? A soft warm up, then a picture, maybe we'll dive deeply into some coding and I will show you some user benefits, how you can create them. Okay, let's start with a soft warm up. Well, the very first element of an HTML code is, of course, the HTML element. You know that. And that's um, also the topic of my first rule of thumb. Define the pain language. That is also in success criterion 3.1.1 of the confirmation level single A. So you have to fulfill that if you want to call your team accessible. And it's a very helpful information for applications, not for the human, but for the applications where so they have, to, they do not need to have to guess what is that uh, human language. No, if you get them it um, with a tag or with an element, with an attribute, with a value by hand, then um, you have um, the application for you and they can, they can speak in the correct language. Well, how to do it wrong? You do not have the language of the web page, the human language, and how to do it right? You tell the human language here in the HTML element 
with the lang attribute, lang is short for language. And you can see here an example how to specify that the human language of that page is in Portuguese, in Brazilian Portuguese. And, but you know, WordPress is a CMS for the whole world. We have many languages. So of course, you cannot fix that language because you do not know what language the WordPress administrator will use. So how to do it more dynamically? For that, WordPress provides a very useful function and that's called the language attributes. Just that um, just, um, puts that into the HTML element and WordPress will do the rest for you. You can set and forget that, okay? Also the same with language changes within the content, uh, content of the web page. For example, um, you have an abbreviation in a foreign language, or you do quote a foreign person in the foreign language. It's very useful for screen readers, for example, to tell them, hey, here comes another language, so change the speaker, for example. How to do that? Well, you can also use a length attribute in any other element of HTML, for example, in a span, in an inline element, or in another block element like block quote. And you can specify the language change there. And of course, you cannot also specify the language. You can also specify the reading direction. For example, in English, we use left to right reading and if you want to quote um, a text in Arabic, you determine there is a change of the reading direction and you can do that with the dir attribute, dir is short for direction and you can tell properly and determine um, for other machines, here comes change of the reading direction. If you want to go deeper into that, then read the specifications in ISO 1766 and uh, read that and you know how to write proper language standard language um, specifications. Like here, last line, short some examples for the British English, for Japanese, and for Farsi, which is spoken in Iran, Iran, Iran. Okay. Now my second step here in the warm up is the page title. I do not mean the title of the content, I mean the title of the whole web page. This is a criterion in the uh, VSEC to help the user to identify the web page and to give the user an orientation within a website. And not only within a website, the page title is, all, is, um, used, is also used by search engines to put a page title on the search engine website page. So it's not useful for disabled people, it's useful for everybody. What can you do wrong here? Well, I saw pages with no title element at all. I saw pages with an empty title element or web pages with a default text with a, which is repeated in, on every page in the title element. Or sometimes I saw the file name or at least there is no unique title for each page in a website. How to do it properly? Well, I um, uh, do see a list of techniques. Um, you can find them in the documentation of the WCAG 
2.1 techniques, use the title element, and choose the title element described to the current page, and so on. At least use a unique title text. So, um, but you don't know what the title will be because every administrator, every um, editor, and any, any contributor can write the title. So we had to do it dynamically. And WordPress, again, provides a useful um, um, function for that. You only need to add the theme support of the title text during the theme setup in the function PAP. And in the header PAP, you just um, call the function WP underscore head. And what that will do the rest for you. Why is that possible? Because this um, WP underscore head calls a function which prints out the title element and this function calls another function which renders the document title. I recommend you to take a look in the WordPress core code to that function. It's a great job done. And it, it, um, it covers every case of a website, for example, a single post, this, uh, a search result page, or um, the error page not found and so on. And you can alter, uh, you can change the page title with the um, filter hooks, um, as you can see here, preset document title and so on. I take, I would, I recommend you take a look at that function, it's very useful. And, but you also can forget that, just use theme support title tag and the, the function WP underscore head. Okay, that was a little warm up for you. I hope you are in there already. But now, the journey begins, we will get deeper into that first. Think about that, we have heard that maybe before you start with accessibility, maybe you learned um, coding that a web page is poorly visual more controlled interface. And if you um, have heard and the all the presentation, you already know, oh, that is not true because when you say it's only a purely visual mode control interface, you already know now that is not true because there are another forms of presenting a web content, a web page content. In reality, a web page is a sequence of content and interactive elements controlled by different technologies for different ways of presentations. Yeah. So, um, to lay the ground for that, a specific mindset is very helpful. Just three, uh, three things you have to know. The first is text is king because every browser, every device can do with text. Not every browser can do with images or with videos or with audio or with an applet or with a flash file. But every device can compute text can do something with text, so text is king. If you have any content, be sure that it is also available in a textual form. The rest is entourage. The second um, trait in your mindset is always give structure with HTML. Not just don't think about only the visual representation of your content. Separate content and the design of it. 
mark up the content with the HTML element. And I will show you the example. And the last third and last trait in your main mindset is keyboard first. If a web page is not accessible with a keyboard, it is not accessible at all. Okay. Mouse and um, loudspeaker and so are additions. Keyboard is the first which has to work. Okay. Again, text is king. Always give structure with HTML elements and keyboard is first. Okay. So now you can, and now you are ready for the big journey. Let's um, take a look at, uh, to the, uh, these, these three topics, structure, meaningful sequence of the content and alternative for non-text contents. Okay, let's go. When it comes to structure, we have to take closer looks to three uh, types of content. Continuous text, like you read paragraph, headings, headlines, paragraph, list, and so on. There are forms and there are tables. If you read continuous text, uh, I'm sorry, if you produce continuous text in your theme, in the editor, or in your plugins page, ensure that the structure of a web page content and the associations between distinct pieces of content are available in HTML. Well, that sounds a bit abstract, but no worry. I'll show you some examples. Bear in mind, visual formatting is not sufficient. Again, separate content and design. Design, yes, it's okay, but first is content, text is king. If you want to give structure, specify the structure programmatically, and later you can design it with CSS, okay? What? Um, what can you do wrong? Well, just a typical HTML code with no structure. There's a um, div element, div is short for division. Of course, it has the attribute called class with the value header. So we can assume, okay, that might be the headline. We have um, text, we have line breaks, and we have maybe some type of list. Yes, of course, we can read that. But now as uh, assistive technology can read that, cannot uh, make sense about that. And if you go further, you will see more examples. You will see now a table in the left column there are some type of elements and in the middle column you see how you can do it wrong and in the right column you see how you do it um, correct. Well, if you want to specify a headline, yes, of course, it's a larger and broad font than the rest of the text and mostly separated by a blank line from the text, from the paragraph. Yes, but um, that is nothing um, an application can detect. So instead, use heading elements of HTML from H1 to H6, and then you can design it with um, CSS. The same goes for list items, for form fields, and for special words words um, like abbreviation or emphasis and so on. The last line of the table um, 
curfew. Why? Because if you use another output device, another than a virtual output, you lost all structure information if you don't um, give any structure information. If you give, if you provide any structure information, then they will be preserved even in a non-visual output, okay? So, community text how-to, here's an example for headings. There'll be a screenshot on the left of an option page in the back end. The red dots are headings, headlines. So you can read them. If you mark them up properly as headings, another device, for example, a screen reader, can detect them as headlines. And the blind user can jump from headline to headline. That's a great benefit for him. And you can see here a, a visual representation of a list of, a headline, of headlines. And I think that's pretty cool, right? How to um, HTML? Well, or how to continuous text? Well, in, in German language, we have a proverb saying, education is when you know where to look it up. So I recommend you look it up in the specification of HTML, how to use the elements, how to use which element for what, and do that properly. And I can say it again and mind my pronunciation myself, use then use these HTML elements and use them and not other inventions because it's a standard and maybe other inventions like division or span um, it's not what, what is known by other devices, okay? Well, now we come to forms. Forms can be a challenge for users with vision impairment, with, mobile, with mobility impairment, with cognitive or learning disabilities and users who are using assistive technologies. Oh, form can be really, really a burden, but you can write acceptable forms. Well, what can you do wrong with forms? Well, uh, in HTML, there's an element called label. And the label element provides an association of the form control, maybe a checkbox, and its description. You can see how to do it wrong. You do not provide any label element, or you provide a label element, but not the association between the form control and its label, its description. We see here two examples um, of label elements not using properly just a label, but there is no um, association of the text and the form control. The machine cannot distinct or cannot specify, uh, cannot, um, specify the association. Another failure is um, when there are fields the user have to fill out, it's so-called required fields. Well, you can see here an abstract uh, form that there are form fields and one field is required to fill out. And it is marked with an asterisk. And the explanation of the asterisk is found somewhere at the bottom of the form. Well, that is not accessible. And sometimes you see required fields marked by color only. Of course, you can leave that, but can you hear it? No, of course not. So, um, marking by color is okay, but that's not sufficient. So, how to do it right? Use the label element, and not only that element, use more structure elements like fill set and nation, like op group in a selection, like submit buttons, especially if you have selection, 
um, indicate required form controls using labels or agents. That means um, in the second example, the first example is um, how to label properly. If, if you use the label element and you use its um, attribute called for, and in the form control, you use the attribute called ID, and you use in both attributes the same value, and now the machine or the software can create an association between the description and the form control. So to can a screen reader and other um, assistive technology. Right? That's, uh, here comes the second um, example, how to, to um, require, how to indicate required fields properly. Well, don't um, put a description or explanation at the end of the form, but indicate um, an understandable description at every form element which is required to fill out. Or you can use it in an agent if you have a group of form elements. So, and then you can indicate it with a color in the second step, of course. First is text is king, third gift structure. Okay. Well, it is important um, when it comes to um, plugin pages or pages for the back end. It is very helpful to provide a consistent presentation of forms. And for that, it's not um, for that, WordPress provides some. Um, function, you see that, you see them here in that um, slide. Just the three lines, setting first, to setting section and something button. Look it up, please, to see the um, um, documentation. And you can prepare the form with, with these two functions at setting field and register setting. You do not have to um, write a, the form element. WordPress will do that for you. With that, um, with, with these three lines, and um, you will get, and the users will get a consistent form of the form. Okay. Now, tables um, are. Oh, that's really important. If you come to widgets on the widget page, where? Well, you can create multiple instances of a widget. How to be sure that the ID is unique on that page? And for that, WordPress provides the two functions, get field ID and get field name. Just so use them as you see that in the code instead of hard-coded values, use these um, functions. If your widget is a subclass of the WordPress widget, WP underscore widget, you have access to these two functions. And WordPress will create unique IDs and names in the forms for the whole widget page. Okay, now it comes to tables. Well, tables are good to present tabular information. What can you do wrong? You are not using table or the table element. You are using uh, the div element or you are using tables for layout proposals only, the so-called layout tables. Um, and you do not prepare, you do, you do not create any distinction between 
uh, column header in the data cell, for example. Well, how to table provide um, the comic markup, provide a summary attribute, a caption element, and using IDs and headers. Well, I show you an example how to write it in your code with the summary attribute in the table element. And here in a complex table, you can see an example how to use the attribute headers and ID. So for example, a screen reader can read out at the table server with the value 20, for example, to which um, column header the table uh, belong. Okay, now you will come to a meaningful sequence. That's a really helpful technique. The meaningful order of content means that you have the header, you have the main content, you have sidebar, you have footers. You can change them, but changing them will not change the meaning of your content. Okay? If that is the case, then you have a meaningful sequence. There might be or there may be several meaningful orders, of course, only one is sufficient for your web page or for your um, theme template. Yeah, and that is um, important because if you provide a meaningful sequence, your web page is accessible not only in virtual browsers, it's also accessible in other devices. What can you do wrong? Well, you do not provide any content structure via HTML, or you want to try it with CSS to at least provide a meaningful sequence visually. But again, there's a lack of structure. That's the big failure. How to do it? Use the HTML elements for structure and test your content. Either turn off the CSS in your browser or use a text-only browser like links or a web service like TextTyle to have a look, to, to, to have um, um, an image, uh, get an image of your text. Okay. And now the third big step in our journey, the third and last big step is about non-text content. Yes, we all love non-text content like videos, like audios, like um, animations. But text is king, right? So what um, are we doing? We provide text, uh, text identity for those types of content. For example, for audios and videos, there's a um, text transcript. And I will show you an example in German of the federal president. You can see here a video in certain sign language. But then the president starts to talk and what he says is also available here as text. Here as a PDF and in an easy language. So if you have a text identity, well, that's accessible, right? Okay, back to our presentation. If you have video, use captions. And with the track element, you can combine video with captions, files, for example. If you have objects, use the alt attribute, use the body of the object element to provide um, um, alternative of the text. 
And now the big topic is of course images. Well, my speakers before me taught a lot about images and alternative text. I just repeat it here. Use height attributes, use um, not only in images, only in sitemap, uh, not in sitemap, in image maps. And if the image is only decorative, just no, don't use any alt text. I want to provide a helpful resource on the server of the w3.org, it's the so called alt decision tree. A very funny and helpful um, graphic to tell you how you um, write an alternative text. And of course, you can do it in a quick way that was described in a presentation ago. Um, that's a talk called telephone test. Well, explain during a phone call the other person an image in not more than 10 words or maybe 11 words. You know, in a short sentence. How would you do it? And how would you do this? You'll get the alt text of that image. Very quick and easy rule of thumb how to write correct and useful alternative text for images. Wow, that's the big journey. Let's step to the last. Um, um, topic of my presentation, and I see, well, I'm running out of time, right? So I will do it fast. Fast and seat by please. Well, keyboard support is very crucial, of course, for accessibility. Keyboard first. So test your web page with the keyboard and without the mouse. If you can access all form elements, with the keyboard only, then you have an accessible web page. If you can um, reach every link with the keyboard only, you have an accessible web page. What can you do wrong? Yeah, you do not uh, use HTML properly. For example, here's a span element with the on-click attribute. That is not a link for a machine. It's something what you invented, no. Or the on change event on the selection field. It's not, um, it, 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 it leads to some orientation failure, right? How to do it properly? Um, well, avoid the use of JavaScript for interactivity and use HTML. Bypass blocks. Oh, that's a great topic. Blocks, I do not mean the Gutenberg blocks. I mean blocks as section of your content of the web page. Repeated on multiple pages like the navigation link block or the main content block, the sidebars, and so on. So provide links to that blocks. These links do not need to be visible. Well, this is so-called skip links. If you use, um, let, let's show me your um, example here on my second tab. Here you can see a page of my local host. And I am using now the tab key once Oh. And you can see here the skip link. It's very helpful for users with visual impairments who use screen magnifiers and it's reading loud for and speaking out loud for screen reader users. Of course, you use the class skip link and screen reader text. And I recommend you to take a look in the file style CSS of the 2020 theme and to reuse these statements in CSS for your themes. 
Well, we will come to an end, I promise. Just links, as we have seen it in the presentations ago, provide useful links because links can be um, print out out of context, out of the bed patch once. For example, in a link list of a screen reader or of another assistive technology. So be sure that a link text is understandable out of context. What can you do wrong? Well, you see the read more links, especially on archive pages um, of a blog. Um, you, and you hear read more, read more, read more, read more, and you do not know, uh, okay, but uh, what's the target of that link? Or you use different links for the same target. It's, it's okay, but not so cool because it's a lack of consistency and may cause disorientation. And now you open your windows in um, in a new tab. Um, maybe I think for me that is not forbidden, but you can do it better. How to? Well, this, uh, provide um, a link text which describes the purpose of a link, and use the same link text for the same target. And of course, use different link text for different targets. For different web pages. You can extend the link text with the title attribute, but be aware that it's not reliable because users can turn off speaking out the title attribute. Instead, extend the link text with visual, uh, visually hidden unique text. And here you can see an example of that. I have um, found that in the theme 2019. It's the function the content, and you can pass the link text for that um, for the week morning. And with that um, construction, you can offer a link which is print out only continue reading, but in an assistive technology. There is a longer description, a unique link. Again, can you see it? if you put the title of the target into the link description, and you and you, so you can provide unique links, hearing, but visually um, consistent links. And how to open new tab is really easy, just say in the link that it is opens a new tab in your window. And if you don't like the text, you can hide it visually. At least it is um, speak out loud for screen reader users. Now, of course, use um, list or group of links and use an element nav for navigation. The nav element it's really useful and education is if you know where to look it up. I provide you a link because in WordPress 5.5, um, there's a great support for net element using ARIA labels. Now I come to the, I think the last one, the last topic of my presentation, the focus order. Focus is, um, when you tap through the content and you can uh, reach the links, the form fields, and the one, provide a meaningful focus order, and that means provide a meaningful sequence first. And so you get a meaningful focus order. What can you do wrong? Use a tap index attribute. Oh. Yes, there's a tab index attribute that you can control the order of the focus while tabbing or during tabbing. But um, you do not know um, if um, what the browser will do with the other element without the tab index attribute. And the other failure is maybe you use the hover pseudo class for mouse overs 
but do not provide the focus class too. So how do we do it properly? Use both the focus and the hover class, uh, photo classes, and avoid the tapping the attributes. That's my um, preferred um, use. Just no tapping that. Just provide a meaningful sequence in the HTML code, and the focus order is meaningful too. Okay, and that's my very last thing is resizing. It's not about zooming, it's about resizing. Resizing the window, for example, or resizing the content with uh, the browser um, functions. Well, how can you do it wrong in HTML? You provide them the meta element with a viewport name. And I have seen that um, you do not allow any scaling or resizing. How to do it properly? Avoid that meta viewport element. Or if you have to use it, allow scaling and resizing. It's the um, values you can see here in the example. Well, congratulations. Now we have come to an end. We have learned the mindset of a successful, accessible developer, te text structure in keyboard first. And we have learned how to structure the template provide meaningful segments with CSS first, provide text identity, provide script links, and provide text-able and resizable content. You have some tools which helps um, you in your work, some metadata like the HTML checker of w3.org, an accessible checker online for called Wave, I love that tool, and a text-only converter, text files. You can find this presentation on SlideShare now um, under that link. And now the world is open for questions. Thank you so much, Martin. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions, but there are some on the site and we'll make sure those get answered. Uh, we're actually gonna be able to move into our closing remarks, but.